Hi everyone, it's October 1st. We'd like to take the time to give you an update on the climate extremes and the outlook for the fall and winter 2019 to 20. This is meteorologist Alex Tardy with the National Weather Service. All right, we've seen a lot of extremes over the past couple of years. Just the past two winters were complete opposites. One very wet with flooding and a lot of growth of vegetation and the other one really a continuation of some very severe dry years. Here are some highlights over the past several years. Take some time to take a look at them. They have been significant in terms of very warm temperatures, cold February, extremely record-breaking wet February. We've also seen some damaging wind events and some river flooding. And with all of this, there's been hot summers and very dry winters mixed in. What does the ocean temperatures look like right now? We take a look at the ocean temperatures because they can have an influence on our weather pattern, especially down near the equator, which we call the Enso zone. That's where La Nina and El Nino form or dissipate and change phase every few years. Now your eyes are probably drawn to the rest of the Pacific. Very warm conditions remain across the northern and much of the eastern Pacific. The red indicates above normal, but the deep reds much above normal. We'll talk a little bit about what's been creating this unusually warm ocean temperatures north of the equator in the Pacific. The general weather pattern since May has looked like this. Dominant upper level high pressure. This is not a semi-permanent high pressure that you sometimes hear about over the Pacific. This is in the upper level atmosphere. It controls the path of the jet stream and thus controls the path of where it's very warm and dry versus where it's very wet and cool. This has been focused over the North Pacific and the Gulf of Alaska, driving storms to the north, and then those storms have been diving south into the northern plains of the United States. This is also what beat up on our monsoon season, and we had a weak monsoon in general, though we did receive some beneficial and excessive tropical moisture in September. Now elsewhere in the Pacific, not much signal the dominant signal really has been this storm track going into the Pacific Northwest and diving across the Northern Plains. This is important because this trend is expected to continue. Here's what it looks like when you break it down to temperature and precipitation. On the left side is the temperature. Most of the West was above normal, especially across the Northern part of California and then the desert regions of Southern California and Arizona into the Four Corners region. A lot of that was attributed to the weak or below average monsoon. You can see on the right hand side is the precipitation percent of average since July 1 all the way through September. Recent rainfall has been significant in the Pacific Northwest. It's been very wet across the upper plains and northern Rockies. Well, that is, as you saw in the prior map, the exact storm track that's been occurring over the past several months. Now, in the southwest, it's been really hit or miss with some recent tropical rains, but overall below average monsoon. What is the outlook for October? Well, we've seen a little bit of a shift in the weather pattern or more amplification, if you will, of the weather pattern. And this continues the trend of above average temperatures over Alaska, but changes as it brings cooler conditions really for most of October for the Pacific Northwest extending all the way into the Northern Rockies and Northern Plains. Whereas above average hot conditions prevail for the month of October over the Eastern or Southeastern United States. Now this does bring the possibility of some precipitation especially into the Pacific Northwest and parts of the Southwest. This outlook is valid just for October 2019. Now how about our fire potential? This is a new outlook and unfortunately the fire potential remains high 
for all of Southern California right through December. And the main reason for this is the weather pattern and also the fuels. The fuels have been running near record lows except for some recent precipitation which has helped that. So with the abundance of fuel from the really wet winter of 2018-19, and then the very weak monsoon of 2019, meaning lack of precipitation in our mountains and deserts overall, and the above average temperatures in those areas, that sets us up for susceptible fire weather conditions. Now the main issue for the fall, as usual, will be the Santa Ana winds. And the Santa Ana winds, because of this weather pattern, will at least be average, if not slightly above average, because of the storms going by just to our north. All right, how about the outlook for the winter? The core of the winter is defined as December through February. The temperature outlook is expected to be above average for most of the West, so warmer than average conditions. Some of that results from not having storms, so you have extended periods of where temperatures are above average. The other part of that is the overall weather pattern. Upper level high pressure dominating can bring warmth and so can Santa Ana's. Now how about for precipitation? The latest outlook for December through February or the core of the winter shows a signal continuing for central and part of Southern California to be below average. And notice the upper plains and far northern Rockies. Yes, that's the area that's been very wet this summer all the way into early fall. And that is also the area because of that persistent weather pattern of the jet stream being shoved across the Pacific Northwest and then diving across the center of the United States. That is basically the result of that pattern continuing. Here's a summary of the outlook for 2019-20. Summer 19 was above average for temperatures, but it was cooler than 2018. That was a record hot summer. Summer 2019 monsoon was below average, drier. There's no signal in the ocean along the equator, so we're not talking about El Nino across the equator, but we do want to note that the entire Pacific is running much above average for sea surface temperatures. Early falls expect to be near average temperature for Southern California and near average precipitation. So no real strong signal, but we do have at least average, if not slightly above Santa Ana wind potential. And that also, in combination with the very dry fuels and the warm, dry monsoon, that also plays a factor into our wildfire danger being above average. The winter 2019-20 is expected to be slightly warmer than average for temperatures, while the winter 2019-20, the core of the winter at least, is expected to be drier than average for most of central Southern California. Fall 2019, as a reminder, is expected to be near average for precipitation, so we may see some precipitation in the fall, but the spring is expected to dry out as well. So overall, um, the winter is shorter. Now, keep in mind, a strong atmospheric river such as we saw in January, February 2019 can occur any year, any month, any week. And it doesn't matter if the overall weather pattern is dry for that winter or not. Those can be high impactful. All right, thanks for watching this video. We'll post updates on weather.gov. And also, if you want the updates directly yourself, visit the Climate Prediction Center website, which is listed here. Be safe for the fall and the upcoming winter. Thanks for tuning in.